Hello again. Remember this? This is the result of the cardboard only worm bin experiment that I started in October 2016, ended uh, late in the year of 2017, let the vermi cardboard, as I called it, stand, and then planted out some seeds in the summer of last year. I planted radish, beetroot, some salad leaves, and lettuce because the pots were quite small. We had a very good summer last year and that probably helped but everything grew and it grew extremely well and it even met with Mrs Worm's taste test. So I was really pleased with that experiment. However, there was a comment left on one of the earlier videos in the series. I'll put a link at the end of this video to them uh, where a question was asked really. The comment went along the lines of some quite well-known vermicomposter, and I think I know who that is, was wondering what kind of cardboard you used as he didn't seem to have such a good experiment with the cardboard only bin. He even spoke about cocoons not hatching and so. Makes me wonder if cardboard is made differently in different places. I guess you counted on the starchy glue to feed the worms. Well, no, because the worms are feeding on the bacteria which is feeding on the cardboard and any glue or anything else. However, the poster then goes on to comment, or could it be the guinea pig bedding that turned the bin into a worm heaven? Now, that's a good point and a good question, because if you look at the first bin in that uh, series, I did use, I think it was about three handfuls of guinea pig bedding to inoculate the cardboard with bacteria for the worms. So you could argue that it wasn't very strictly cardboard only, that even though we're talking about a year, more than a year and a half later, from the point when it started to the point when I actually started planting and we started it was it was no more than three handfuls I don't think I'd have to go back and look at the video but I don't think it was more than three handfuls of guinea pig bedding nevertheless it is strictly true that it wasn't it didn't start off as cardboard only we did have the guinea pig bedding but subsequent to that the only thing that was added to that bin was cardboard so I'm going to run the experiment again and this time I'm going to use nothing not even eggshells absolutely nothing except cardboard so I'm going to start with a reasonably sized container kitchen towel some tape cardboard and of course the worms so this is a, a food scrap container that I use to collect the food scraps. I don't need to drill any holes in the bottom because it's only going to be fed with cardboard. I'm going to add a little bit of water and on to, into that I'm going to add just plain brown cardboard, nothing else. Give it a good mix so that the cardboard will soak up that water which will leave the cardboard then plenty wet drain out the excess and this will be their bedding and their food I'm just going to uh, flatten it out so the bottom of the uh, bin is covered like I said I don't need to drill any drainage holes for the simple reason I won't be adding anything that contains uh, much moisture I'd say the moisture content of cardboard is quite negligible. So that's the bedding done. Now I picked a handful of worms out of one of the beds in the garden. And as you can see, this is um, not a composting worm. It, it, within the soil, there's basically two main types of worms in the UK. Uh, one makes vertical burrows and the other makes horizontal burrows and they don't live in compost and they won't survive in compost piles they need to live in the soil you can see that guy's tail that's one of the telltales it's kind of flat like a paddle there's a mix of uh, composting worms in here now so I, they're in a little bit of water just because I want to wash as much of the dirt off them as I can before I add them to the bin Yes, going back to the earthworms, the, uh, th they use that paddle to grip onto the side of their burrows if birds are trying to pull them out. So it's kind of a defence mechanism. But he would not survive in that bin. 
it would be no good no good for him whatsoever so you can't really go out into the garden and dig up large earthworms and add them to your compost pile or your compost bin if you have an open pile in the garden where which is open onto the ground that wouldn't be a problem because they'll just make their way down into the soil but they've evolved to live in uh, different layers than what we know as uh, composting worms so i wasn't sure what i had here most of these are not adults um, as you can see there they don't have the um clitellum so that guy does so th there's um there's a there's a real mix here there's no cocoons and when i added them up i have a total of 27 worms most of them not adults so we're starting the bin with cardboard only, absolutely nothing else, not even eggshells added for grit, and 27 composting worms. So that's it. I'm going to put the lid on. On top of that hole, um, I'm just going to put a bit of tissue. I'm going to tape it down, and that will allow plenty of air in and out of the bin. I'm just going to put a little label on it with the date and to remind people not to add anything to that bin and it's going to stay there. I'll come back to this in a month and see how they're getting on and remember clear your diaries because this is going to take at least a year and a half. As always thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>